Hello everyone and welcome to Mass Analytics Masterclasses where we'll be sharing with you useful tips when it comes to running your marketing mix modeling end-to-end. -end. In the previous course, we have covered modeling, regression, model selection, ROI, and contribution calculation. In today's course, we will cover three of the most important techniques when it comes to run contemporary marketing mix models. The first one is poor regression, the second one is log linear, and the third one is nested models. Now, reflecting on the marketing mix modeling workflow, we are now at step number four, where actually we are starting to model the data that we have. And that's where you need to take a decision on which algorithm you'll be using. Are you going to use standard regression, linear regression, or are you going to opt for a pull regression or a nested models or a log linear? In master, you would be able to perform your pull regression, your nested models, and your log linear in the module model. And actually, you can also concatenate some of those methods. For example, you can run a pull regression while applying a log linear transformation and at the same time nest some of your models in order to obtain nested models. Pull regression. So what is the difference between national models and regional models? Modeling at the national level means that I'll be modeling all my sales all together, my total sales. I'm not really interested in looking at the details of, for example, where the, those sales came from. However, if I am going to model at the regional level, it means that I am interested in the details. For example, I would like to understand my sales variation store by store, if I am a retailer. Or, for example, for a CPG brand, I could be interested in looking at the variation of my sales by region or by DMA, if I am in the States. So if I am interested in those level of details, that's where pull regression will be needed. What are the benefits of pull regression? As you know, in regression analysis, the more data points you have, the better it is, because actually it increases the likelihood of measuring an activity, and at the same time, it enhances the robustness of any measure. What happens in pull regression is that actually, by nature, when you pull your data, you will increase the number of data points. And that obviously will have positive consequences on the robustness of your model and the robustness of your measures. And at the same time, you'll be capable of measuring activities that happened at the regional level. So not only will be capable of reporting on the impact of activities that you run at the national level that will impact all the regions, but if you had specific activities that were targeting specific regions, you will also be capable of measuring those impacts. So how does regional modeling works? Actually, what happens behind the scene is that all the data is pulled and one single equation will be estimated. If I take the example of a product that is sold through three main accounts, say for example, Boots, as the super drag, which are three main retailers in the UK. And if for each store I have data that stretch from the 1st of January 2018 and the 31st of December 2020, that gives me exactly 152 data points for each account. So if I decide to pull my data, actually the size of my data set will become 152 times 3. So I have tripled the number of data points, and again, that would have different benefits like, for example, the improvement of the robustness of my measure and also the capability of measuring impacts at the regional level. In mathematical terms, what happens is actually the data coming from every single account will be stacked as the super drag and boots. And then a regression line is estimated through uh, all those stacked regions using the normal OLS methodology. Pull regression doesn't come without complication. To be capable of applying OLS, as I mentioned earlier on, the regions that you are stacking need to have the same average. However, this is not always the case. Sometimes we are pulling regions where we have high sales in some regions and small sales in the other region. So if you do not apply any transformation or any normalization to our data, and we apply OLS to the non-transformed or the non-standardized data, what happens is that in the regions where we are selling less than the average, we will be overestimating sales. 
and in the regions where we are selling above the average we'll be underestimating sales and this is not good so that's why it's really advisable to apply some kind of normalization to your data so you can apply pull regression so the following example depicts the relationship between price and uh, your sales at the level of different regions. So if you focus on each region separately, you can clearly see that when the price increases, actually your sales decrease. And if your price decreases, your sales increase. However, if we pull the data without any transformation, and we want now to fit a line through the six points that you see in the chart, actually the relationship between price and sales becomes positive, which is counterintuitive. And this is actually one of the consequences of running pull regression without prior data normalization. So when is normalization needed? If you are pulling your data because you are interested in looking at the details of your regional variations, perhaps in most of the cases you would need to normalize your data. However, if you are using log linear, probably you wouldn't need to normalize the data because your data set would have already been normalized through the log linear transformation. If you are running national models, again, probably you wouldn't need to normalize your data. Now, how can you normalize your data? There are three transformations that you can opt for. The first one is take the variable and subtract its mean from it, or you can divide it by its mean, or you can divide the variable by the mean of the dependent variable. Now, more details will follow in a dedicated course to pull regression. When we normalize data in the context of pull regression, what we are assuming in a way is that the coefficient in percentage is the same across all the regions. This is actually a fair assumption. If you are running a national TV or a national media activity, you would expect that in percentage term, the impact is the same across all the regions. Obviously, in percentage is the same, but when you multiply back by actually the size of the region, you will have different absolute impact of that activity depending on the size of the region. However, sometimes we can suspect that some regions are more sensible to an activity than other ones. In that context, what I advise you to do is to split the variable across the regions. If, for example, I'm modeling across north and south, and I think that customers in the south are more sensitive to prices, what I can do is to split my variable across north and south so I can measure a different elasticity of price across north and south. So as a rule of thumb, always assume the same percentage contribution across regions, but whenever you suspect that certain regions behave in a different manner, you can use the splitter transformation in order to account for different elasticities of your marketing and media variable across the regions that you are modeling.